Hey, Nick. Hey, what's up? Uh, this Charnel House trilogy is what's up. Yeah? Yeah, words. this is a... This, there's a lot of words there. Charnel actually means death, if you can believe it or not. Right. Having to do with death. I learned that recently in my Bloodborne Let's Play. Uh, but this game, <laughs> Charnel House Trilogy, is a very small indie adventure game mm -hmm. consisting of sort of three chapters. And this first chapter here is all about Alex. Uh, it is a, She seems to be like a young woman, maybe in her 20s. She seems very millennial, the way she's sort of dressed. You can kind of only see her butt here and her jeans. Sure. But, uh, it's a very millennial uh, butt, yeah, though, she's, in fairness. It's a millennial butt. It's absolutely a millennial butt. Uh, she is sort of, right here, we're sort of learning about, uh, she got a weird call from a British dude who's inviting her to a British museum, and that's interesting, but she also got a call from her mom. Something is wrong with her father, and she needs to make a journey to a creepy island called Augur Peak Island. Spooky. Yeah. It's very, very spooky. I'm sure you're so this game is made by Owl Cave, you know you uh, mm -hmm. and it actually, I believe that Ashton oh, Reyes or Nina White and a whole bunch of, believe it or not, game journalists did voice work in this oh, game. Oh, okay, this is that game. This is that game. Yes, gotcha. absolutely. Jim Sterling is in here. Uh, Kara Ellison is in here. All sorts of people are in here, huh. uh, which is super interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's not usually the thing you uh, you encounter in a no. game. No. <laughs> yeah, typically not. It, uh, you know what it reminds me? I'm trying to remember the name, but there's a series, or really, I guess, a developer of uh, indie game, uh, sort of like adventure games that are in a very similar style to this. Do you have any sense of this is a, a dev who's done this uh, style of game before? Yeah, I mean, it feels like that. I know that uh, one of the people behind Wadget Eye Games uh, yes, that's what I'm shepherd talking this about, along. Yeah. yeah, it looks a lot like um, this game that came out a few years ago by Wadget Eye. A few of those games. This kind of looks a lot mm -hmm. like those games like it's a very pixel art style but it's almost like it's going for that uh you know pc in the mid 90s sort of like you know quote unquote photorealism uh but with but with that sort of chunky pixel art style yeah right down to like the the crosshair reticle and everything exactly yeah this is definitely sort of playing on a lot of that and this is very much a classic adventure game you're just pointing and clicking uh, sort of making decisions, you're using your inventory, you're sort of picking up items. Uh, here I skipped ahead a little bit to where uh, Alex meets this other guy, they're waiting for a train, and they're both going to this creepy island together, uh, which is very interesting and very mysterious, because we don't really know what's on this creepy island, other than the fact that it is related to a book that, that an ex-boyfriend gave her. So how, how, uh, about, how much of this have you gotten to play so far? Uh, I played through sort of the first uh, chapter and a half out of the three mm -hmm. chapters, basically. So, um, so far, so good in terms of the writing. Yeah, uh, I feel like games like this really, very... they live or die on that, right? Like, I, I feel like a game that's this dialogue-centric is, is only worth playing if the writing is any good. Yeah. And it, and it feels pretty good so far. I mean, again, I'm, I'm a couple hours in, maybe. Uh, it's not a very long game. I don't get the sense that it's very long. So each chapter feels, you know fairly concise. There's not a lot of, you know, bullshit in there. You can certainly take your time by clicking on everything in the environment, and sort of the writing feels, you know, pretty good and pretty present. Uh, the characters kind of feel real. I, I care about Alex already. I care about sort of what she's going through. Uh, I like her little choker. You can kind of see that in her portrait. Mm -hmm in her fashion sense. Uh, so basically, she's sort of telling him, oh, uh, you have nothing to read. Here's this book, and it's it has to do with the Charnel House. Uh, and this guy is a professor. Oh, He's the some train kind just of snuck up on him. history professor. Yeah, and here's that train. So here uh, we meet sort of another character in the game as soon as he steps out of the train. Yeah, okay, here we go. I skipped ahead a little bit here. He's the conductor of the train, and here's the first... It's not the first sense that something is a little weird going on, but it's kind of a good... I felt like this is a good way of showing something bizarre is going on here. We've already seen uh, a, a sort of a ghost apparition show up. Now, there's something in that luggage, mm -hmm. and we don't know what it is, and it's pretty creepy. Yikes. Yeah, it feels like this is very much building up to whatever is going to actually happen on this island. This is very much an introductory thing. Uh, yeah, how, is this, pretty, how is this being sold? Do you know? Uh, I think this is actually just all in one. Uh, so there's three chapters, but they're sort of treated as different games. But uh, I think when you when you buy the game, you basically get all three chapters, and that's that's the thing. So here, well, we got a raven on this Ooh. guy's shoulder. I reckon so. Oh, he's talking to the raven. He is, and now oh oh he oh, and he now killed he killed the raven. Oh, something 
something creepy is certainly going on, and I sort of really love the tone of this game. I just love the sort of creepy horror stuff. So this yeah. has been the Charnel House Trilogy, which Good is work. out now on Steam. Cool. Thanks for showing it to me. Thank you.